Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you from the Stephen Tejada studio on the expansive first floor of the Winners and Winners Sports and Entertainment Complex to bring you today's deep three. As always, if you would be so kind, if you haven't done so already, please give us the old thumbs up and uh, maybe even consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Just like 6,000 people have done so far. That's right, we went over the 6K mark on uh, yesterday's video. Uh, I say it every time, It's uh, part of it is, uh, it, it really kind of freaks me out. It's, it's very humbling and uh, it's very, very cool. It says a, a lot about you guys and uh, the community that we've kind of created around here and uh, the sense of camaraderie. So appreciate each and every one of you each and every day. Uh, and that is from the bottom of my heart, not lying. So thanks very much. And yeah, we'll do our part. We'll keep working hard. We'll see if we can keep putting good picks up. Uh, all right. So, uh, of course, don't forget to check out uh, winnersandwinners.com, statsalt.com. Deep dives into every sport uh, every single day. Man, it is a cool resource when you're going back and forth between sports. If you're going back and forth between hockey, college basketball, now you're over to action. Uh, whatever it is, it's all right there at your fingertips. Very easy to go, very, very easy to navigate, and very great information. So, and uh, most importantly, speaking to you guys, making it happen, we want to know what you're playing today. Tell us what games you're on. Maybe you, uh, maybe you got some thoughts on the deep three, tail and fading, whatever it is. Man, there's a lot of sports out there. This is the this is the golden time right here, everybody, where we've got all five things rocking. We have uh, basketball and football for on both college and the pros, and of course we have NHL hockey. And that's just in this country. Maybe you've got some soccer plays cooked up from across the pond. Uh, whatever it is, if you can bet on it, you can win it. You put it up there, get it right. We'll give you the shout out. You get enough of them right, just like uh, Stephen Tejada. You will be our capper of the day. Stephen put together one three-team parlay yesterday and hit it in fine style. So, uh, with that being said, let's check and see how we did yesterday. Oh, first of all, let's uh, let's uh, or, yeah, let's uh, we uh, went one and two on the uh, deep three. We had the uh, Kent State Toledo over that took care of business in spite of Toledo. Uh, kind of going in a shell there in the second half. And uh, on the, we had the Ball State, Western Michigan under a game that was, uh, we should have been in great shape. We were under 64 and a half. They were at 38 entering the fourth quarter. And uh, just one goddamn stop on defense couldn't get it. So just four drives, four touchdowns, puts us over in that one. So yikes. And then we had the uh, Gonzaga Bulldogs, who woke up a little bit late. They were only up by eh, 12, 12 or 14 at halftime. Um, they pulled they pulled their heads out, but just a little bit too late as they kind of find, started finding their groove, and they ended up winning that one by 31 instead of the 34.5 that we needed. On the premium side, we split. We had the Orlando team total under, and we had the Toledo Rockets to cover the uh, what ended up being uh, down in the uh, like 4 to 6 range, depending on when you got it this afternoon. And uh, yeah, that was that was a brutal game for us. They lost their uh, they lost their star running back. We had a uh, kid kid there that was a running back was they had the eleventh uh, highest total uh, yards per game in the country. He, he went out in the uh, you know, late in the first quarter, early in the second quarter. Uh, go back and uh, yeah, Seymour replaced him. Did fine, but man, you just you just missed that extra gear that cat had. And they end up uh, they had the lead. They they were they were well positioned to do it. They had an eight point lead throughout the game at least, and they just couldn't shut them down one time to, uh, to in the in the fourth quarter. They, they let them drive down there, including uh, uh, converting a third and 17 on the last drive, a third and seven with a quarterback scramble, and fourth and goal from the five, and they ultimately scored the touchdown that screwed us. So uh, just couldn't get, literally couldn't get a stop for one more play. So we got one and one on the premium side, one and two on the deep three. That stops our losing, that stops our winning streak on the deep three. At uh, what do we got? Five Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, four. So we had, we had had four. We'd gone. And I believe I misspoke. I think I did twelve and two yesterday. We actually had twelve and three, and uh, so now we're thirteen and five since Friday. Yeah, not nearly as fun. So anyway, let's see if we can start another streak here tonight. First thing we're going to do is the uh, capper of the day, play of the day, the COD POD from Stephen Tejada. Uh, Stephen, he like uh, he gave us a little twofer here. He likes the Pistons and the Rockets. Uh, to win, as he puts the post up, they were both around even money. So he likes both of those teams on the money line. Get yourself down on the Detroit Pistons and the Houston Rockets. Neither one of those picks stepped on anything that I had for today. I love that. So uh, good luck on both of those plays, Stephen. And uh, as far as what we've got, we're going to take a double shot of Mac in here. I've got two plays from the Mac. 
First thing we're looking at is the uh, uh, Miami uh, and Ohio. Uh, Miami is a plus seven on the road. You know, this is going to be a weird game. It's kind of, a, kind of an interesting challenge to cap. You have one average offense against an average defense, and then you have one bad offense against a bad defense. Uh, Miami, the bad offense, they're going to look to run the ball a little more than they pass it. Although, here's the deal. You look at their, you look at their yards per carry, not horrible, but with the exception of 289 yards they put up in the driving rate at Kent State, uh, the Red Hawks have averaged just three yards per carry on the ground uh, in their other FBS games. Uh, they had just, uh, excuse me, in just one other FBS game, that was 3.01 yards uh, versus Western Michigan. Uh, the quarterback, Brent Gabbert, has struggled. He's uh, completing just 53.1% of his passes, five TDs, five interceptions on the season. However, Ohio, they've kind of got a bad habit of making below average offenses look good. Every home game, has turned into a shootout, and the Bobs have yet to cover on their home turf. Guys, I'm gritting my teeth in this one. I'm taking Miami and the points. Give me the Miami of Ohio Red Hawks plus the seven points. And keep an RI on that same game. Looking at the uh, at the over here. Uh, Ohio, they've got a nice, well-balanced attack. They've got a great dual-threat quarterback. He's going to force the Miami defense to make choices and decisions all night long. And you know how that works out. You make the wrong decision. The Bobcats, they have the talent to make them pay. Uh, the bad news for Ohio, as we touched on earlier, their defense has been dreadful. They've given up almost 41 points per game in their three home games. That is uh, two MAC contests and a game against Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, they give up 5.4 yards per carry in the MAC, and that should work out well for a Red Hawks team. That looks to tote the rock first and foremost. I think they trade blows in this one. I think it turns into one of those Mac games where you're like, I don't know how that team is still in it, but they are. And I think uh, at the end of the night, I think the smoke clears. I think Miami covers the number, and I think this goes up and over the total of 54 and a half. And we're going to finish up with a play from the NCAA as uh, two pretty good teams go at it. As the Cincinnati Bearcats travel down to Columbus, take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. The total there is 139 and a half. Kids, I like the over in this one. Since he has a new coach, uh, a guy came over from Northern Kentucky. He's uh, had the uh, had the uh, the Norse in the NCAA tournament what, for the last five years. The other time they went to the NIT. And uh, all signs point to them opening up the offense more and relying less on their defense and the uh, plotting offense that they ran over the last few seasons. Um, Ohio State, you know, they've still got Caleb Wesson in the middle, and they've got his brother at the shooting forward. Uh, the Buckeyes, you know, they've got a Florida they got a Florida State transfer that's supposed to be able to take over the point. Uh, they also have a freshman coming in that uh, was a uh, five-star recruit that could be uh, sp- spend some time there at the point or even uh, the shooting guard as well. Uh, both of these teams uh, got a lot younger, and uh, most glaring mistakes that are going to be made by youngsters are, of course, going to come on the defensive side of the ball. I think we're getting a little extra value uh, based on the Bearcats' defensive reputation and their dominance over the last few years, I wouldn't be surprised to see this number uh, even uh, go down a little bit throughout the day as the uh, as the Sharps get involved. Excuse me, I wouldn't be surprised to see it go up a little as the Sharps get involved. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wrote that, and I, you know what? Now I'm I'm not uh, I'm having I'm having second thoughts about where that line's going to go because I think the public perception on this, I think that you know, I think that may be one of those things where it kind of evens it out. Uh, it'll be curious to watch where this number goes because it's going to tell you where the sharp money is. I think the, I think the uh, average Joe money, I think it's going to be one of those weird ones where it comes in on the under because of Cincinnati's, Cincinnati's reputation. We'll see if the sharps bet enough to offset that. So uh, at any rate, we're going to cap at 139.5. Let's get ourselves down on the Ohio State Cincinnati Bearcats. Over 139.5. And, and speaking of over, how about the Miami of Ohio Red Hawks and the Ohio Bobcats over 54.5. In that same game, we're going to take the Miami, uh, just set it, the Red Hawks, to cover the seven points. At the end of those three, it'll be Max Show on Wednesday. We're humping to please, everybody. You guys can join me. We'll pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, let's see how you guys did here real quick. You see, we're kind of moving this along. We're just... Uh, we're doing a little less plugging than we used to do. I do put the link for my premium service in the uh, in the description of the article. If you guys want to get down on the premium picks, I do have the link there. So uh, please help yourself. Love to have you on the team. All right. Legendary King. Legendary King started with a little bit of a fun fact that my son actually pointed out to me. I didn't even realize it. 
Uh, he said he noticed this week that in the NFL, all the home teams uh, won. He said the Jags are in London, so they don't count. Fair enough. Uh, they went a perfect against the spread also. Yeah, that was a... That was true for all the Sunday games, the uh, Thursday, weirdly the Sunday, or the, or the, uh, the uh, Thursday and the Monday game, uh, both the visiting teams took care of business there. So, uh, Miguel and Nola said, oh shit, it's Maction. <laughs> yes, it is, my friend, and we're off to a, uh, we're off to a somewhat uh, ignominious start, so we'll see how that goes. We expect, we expect a rally here tonight with that Miami of Ohio game. And uh, Steve Godin, uh, Steve had a uh, perfect day. He took the dogs. He had Kent State plus seven on a three-way plus one hundred. He had a uh, the uh, three-way on the on Ball State as well plus seven. Both of those hit. It. How about uh, how about uh, two and zero oh plus two hundred for Steve Godon? Uh, young news. That's N period E period W period yes period or S period. I uh, said uh, yo love the show. It's an awake and bake to you every morning. Uh, that is neither, uh, that is, uh, I, we certainly do not endorse any sort of activity that may or may not be illegal in your state. Uh, please check your local jurisdiction and uh, act accordingly. Uh, he said he's been one off, he says he's been one, one off one pick every time. He said that uh, the DAC pick killed me. Yeah, no kidding, man. Uh, we talked about that yesterday, that penalty uh, on, on Witten's, you know, what do you have, 25, 28 yard gain there. That just absolutely cooked us on that. He said, but I'm at them again tonight. He's taking Western Michigan on the money line, Toledo on the money line, and both unders. That, my friends, uh, was not a uh, was not a high quality night there for Young News. Uh, see, that's what happens when you bitch out about just when you bitch about just missing one of them, uh, then you miss three. So, uh, hang in there, brother. Thanks for the kind words, of course, and uh, bake one for me. All right, my uh, my wake and bake days are a little bit past. I'm not saying that that's uh, wasn't once part of my routine, but. Uh, Ah, uh, good times. C Dub, uh, C Dub had a couple of winners there in Europe. He had Ipswich and he had Valencia, and uh, missed out a couple on uh, on the uh, on the Champions League. So I know C Dub will be uh, keeping his powder dry. Be back at fire firing at him again tomorrow. So uh, Mike B, Mikey B, he uh, he likes to uh, shave those lines down a little bit, pay a little extra, and uh, he did. Worked out for him as he got that Boston, uh, the Boston Celtics down to minus three, and he uh, did tail us on the uh, Ball State under sixty four. Jeez, Mike, just a just a heartbreaking situation there. So, uh, yep, yep, that's uh, uh, yeah, four touchdowns in the fourth quarter. You're going to uh, pretty much put a put a damper on your under every single time. Uh, Jonathan Manson had a, a tip about Central Michigan. He said the Chippewas last home game off a of bye week. He said he usually skips Mac games. But I uh, said most of your viewers probably do the same thing. Absolutely. But uh, he likes the Chippewas on the money line as they come out of that buy strong. So keep an eye on that one. That is going to be going on next week, by the way. They have this week off. So uh, mark it on your calendars. Chippewas on the money line. Robert McCary said he got his, he's got a couple punches left after a brutal weekend. Tailing you on all three. Man, that, uh, you know what? I don't blame you. I've been hot. And, uh, yep, we were, uh, again, one stop away from having at least a profitable day there, uh, two and one. So, uh, Hammered Hank, he's tailing. Oh, Hammered Hank. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, a lot of, I had a lot of long tails out there today, and we stepped on them. Uh, Cyrus Quing, he did not tail. He, uh, he went out on his own, and it worked out pretty well for him. He had uh, Eastern Kentucky, he said Chicago Bulls, plus seven. Nice job, my friend. And he had Charlotte plus three. He went three and zero oh, plus three hundred. Nice job, Cyrus Quing. Uh, the Oracle, the Oracle. Very. He's going to be laughing all of the way to the bank. And he might have been. He might be chuckling. He went two and one on the day. Uh, a couple of nice first half picks in the Colorado State and the Arkansas State basketball games. And uh, he went two and one plus ninety on the day. Only miss was the Auburn Tigers, who did not quite get up and over that number fourteen. Uh, Ninja thirteen had a fine day, and he's the guy that. One of the one of the guys that have been asking for more hockey. Man, I'd have you on the hockey show. He went three and zero in the NHL today. His only miss was from the NCAA Princeton Duquesne game, and uh, Ninja goes three and one plus one ninety. Nicely done, Ninja. Uh, Derek Saunders. He had a, a couple of nice picks from the NCAA. He split on his NHL. He goes a uh, uh, plus one twenty on the Blues and missed out on the Blackhawks uh, money line. He goes three and one plus two twenty on the day. Nice job, Derek. Well done, my friend. And uh, Stephen Tejada, he said, hey, thanks for the shout-out. It's an honor to be camp for the day. Man, you guys earn it. I, uh, I'm happy to do it for you. I love seeing you guys do that. Uh, that being said, he uh, had some picks for today. 
he had uh, he did he had a parlay man, and this is a, this is a heartbreaker. He just about hit back to back parlays. He had the Lakers over one twelve. Yep. He had Kent State plus eight and a half. Yep. And he had the Atlanta Hawks under one oh seven and a half. That game uh, ended. The Atlanta Hawks put up one oh eight. I believe that is I believe that is correct. Uh, let me double check here. I might have been man. I might have been. Uh, I might have been checking out the total of the game and having to, I want to double check something here just to make sure, you know, I, I, I know you guys are unaccustomed to me ever making a mistake, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's happened at least once. Yep. I was right. Atlanta was one Oh eight. I thought, I thought I might've read it and it was two Oh eight on the, on the total as well. But yeah, that's uh so he loses his three point. He loses his three tamer. Uh, he misses by half a, half a point on the last leg. So that was, that was brutal. Steven, very, very close. Uh, very close night for a lot of us here, man. Just, uh, just easy. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, not a bad day by anybody. Uh, definitely had some guys make money. Our positive cappers for the day, the Oracle, 2-1 plus 90. Ninja 13, 3-1 plus 190. Steve Godon, 2-0 plus 200. Derek Saunders, 3-1 plus 220. And I believe it's going to be the first time for this one. It is uh, uh, CQ, baby, 3-0 plus 300. It is Cyrus Quing. Cyrus Queen, man, nicely done. Again, a perfect sheet. 3 0 plus 300. Cyrus Queen, you are our capper of the day. Congratulations, my friend. Cyrus, if you've got a pick for any of the games on Thursday, you've got a, what do you got, a NFL, uh, NFL battle there of the AFC West. You got, uh, I believe we've got a, a football game. Of course, now we've got basketball out the wazoo. So anything you want to throw up there for your capper of the day, play of the day, feel free to put it in the comment section tomorrow and I will get it out to everyone. All right. So the rest of you guys, all right, it's a long season. Pace yourself, everybody. Keep your powder dry. We're going to come out firing, and let's get her done, all right? Uh, you guys, no matter what happens, we'll meet back here tomorrow. So I call about 24 hours from now, and uh, we'll do what we do. We'll uh, bitch about our bad beats. We'll bitch about how they can't stop anybody in the fourth quarter. And we'll brag about the fat stacks, especially for Cyrus Quing. And because it's going to be Thursday, it's going to be NFL. We're doing what we do. We're D-Gen City, man. We are knee-deep in it, everybody. We'll fire it up, and we'll do it all again, all right? You guys take care. Have a great day. Good luck on all of your plays. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.